The Ugly Duckling. Once upon a time, in a fairy tale place where anything can happen, Dolores Duck was sitting on her eggs, waiting for them to hatch. While four of them looked normal, the fifth looked like a jelly bean. But as mothers do, Dolores loved them all the same until they hatched. The first four, Carl, Carla, Carlotta, and Carlito, were perfectly downy yellow ducklings. But the one from the jelly bean? Not so much. Agatha Louise was flat and covered with fur the color of coffee. She had four squatty legs, clawed webbed feet, and a chocolatey, leathery, ping-pong paddle-shaped tail with an almost duckly bill to match. But not a wing or a quack to her name. And when Dolores did roll call, Carl quack! Carla, quack! Carlotta, quack! Carlito, quack! Agatha Louise, <coughs> Agatha Louise, <coughs> Agatha Louise, is that any way to talk to your mother? Oh, but mother, cried Agatha Louise, <coughs> is how I talk. It is also how you get a time out, young lady, the young duckling, the young whatever you are. <laughs> Looks like an ugly duckling to me, whispered Carl to his brother and sisters, who laughed and laughed. <laughs> Agatha Louise pretended not to hear as she watched her siblings strut to the pond, bob for their breakfast, and splash about. I can swim too, she shouted, but no one paid any attention. Something is not right here, she thought tearfully to herself, and what's not right is me. That night, when all the ducks were balanced on one leg, fast asleep, Agatha Louise snuck away. She walked for hours, her short little legs propelling her through tall marsh grasses until she heard a splashing sound. She poked her head through the reeds, <laughs> and saw an animal swimming joyfully among her children. Mind if I join you? asked Agatha Louise. Oh, please do, the sleek-furred mother responded. I think this lake is big enough for one more. <clears throat> My name is Agatha Louise, and you are... Oh, I'm Etta the Otter, said the adult female. 
And these little cutie pups are Sammy, Pammy, and Tammy. Hey, come on in and play, yelled Pammy. Agatha Louise scuttled into the lake. From under the water, she saw that their bodies were just like hers. Oh, maybe I'm an otter, Agatha Louise thought happily, playing duck, duck, goose with her newfound friends. she said aloud. I used to think I was a duck. What is a duck? wondered Tammy. It's a bird with feathers and wings and webbed feet that can swim in a lake or fly in the sky, Edda replied. But instead of a mouth like yours, Agatha Louise added, it has a bill like mine. All the otter pups crowded around to take a closer look. Whoa, Sammy said, and then Tammy spotted her tail. Oh, what on earth is that, she asked, shying away. Well, don't you each have a tail, queried Agatha Louise. Not like that, she said. We're otters with tails that match our bodies. My tail matches my beak, said Agatha Louise proudly. Maybe I'm just a different brand of otter. Yeah, smirked Sammy, an ugly one. As the sun began to set, each of the otters dove into the lake to find its supper and then used its tummy as a table to feast on what it found. Meanwhile, Agatha Louise scooped up yummies from the bottom with her bill, and as she reached the surface, she started to chew. Hey, yelled Sammy. That's not the way we otters do it. I suggest you mind your own business, said Edda, and let our guest eat the way she likes. Sammy, Pammy, and Tammy grudgingly did as they were told. But they weren't happy about it. And they certainly weren't happy with Agatha Louise. Something is not right here, she said to herself, and I believe that something is me. So that night, when the otters were soundly sleeping in their den, she scurried away. <laughs> belong somewhere, she wept as her little non-otter legs skidded her from the shore to the forest floor. After walking for what felt like forever, she heard a huge cracking sound and scooted out of the way just as a giant leafy tree, boom, hit the earth right where she had been standing. A strangely bucktoothed critter shouted to a pair of smaller versions of herself as she ran to Agatha Louise's side. Sweet thing, 
she said, checking to see if Agatha Louise had been injured. Are you okay? <laughs> I think so, trembled Agatha Louise. Wow, did you look out, one of the younger creatures cried. That tree almost smoothed your beautiful tail. You don't think my tail is ugly? Agatha Louise was astonished. How could he, said his sister, when we have ones just like it? The two youngsters compared their trailing appendage to hers and found them to be the same, as were their fur and number of feet. Oh, where are our manners, children? asked the mother to her kids. We are the beavers, she proclaimed. I'm Beverly, and these are Theodore and Bucky Sue. Pleased to make your acquaintance, said Bucky Sue politely. Yes, agreed Theodore, looking at their guest inquiringly. So who and what are you? Oh, I'm Agatha Louise. I'm not a duck or an otter, but I love to swim underwater. So do we, grinned Beverly. Everyone, follow me. She led the three youngsters to the river, and they all waded in, their squeals of laughter singing in Agatha Louise's ears. Maybe I'm a beaver, she thought happily. Closer to the horizon, Beverly gathered her brood plus one for dinner around the stump of that newly fallen tree. Okay, kids, let's eat, she commanded, and her kids joined her in gnawing at the broken branches with their pointy front teeth. Come on, Agatha Louise, invited Bucky Sue. These are delicious. But poor Agatha Louise could not get even the smallest branch past her bill, and besides, she had no pointy teeth to chew it. You are just plain weird, whispered Bucky Sue. Theodore nodded, and ugly too, he added, as Agatha Louise trundled back to the lake to bottom feed alone. Something is not right here, she said to herself, and I believe that something is me. So Agatha Louise slunk off again, her heart broken in two. by the time she stopped to eat. As she soaked them in a river, she saw a familiar reflection staring back at her. 
the closer she moved toward it, the more like her own it appeared to be. Suddenly, it emerged from the water and Agatha Louise was beak to beak with a larger version of herself. It said. She responded. Agatha Louise, it asked her. Mom? Agatha Louise responded. The two snuggled together, crrring and swimming and eating and just catching up until finally, Agatha Louise asked her mother the one question she had been trying to answer her whole little life. What am I? Oh, my darling child, her mother laughed, her eyes filled with love. You are a platypus just like me. A what a puss? asked Agatha Louise. A platypus, her mom explained, which a lot of other animals may think are weird and ugly, remembered Agatha Louise sadly. But that doesn't mean it's true. Agatha Louise was shocked. It doesn't? True to them, maybe, the grown-up platypus continued. But to another platypus, there is no animal more beautiful. Oh, gee. Does, does that mean you think I am beautiful? I, Patty Platypus, think you, Agatha Louise Platypus, are the most beautiful creature I have ever seen. Not counting Agatha Marie Platypus, Agatha Elizabeth Platypus, and Davy Crockett Platypus. Oh, I have sisters and a brother too? Patty smiled and nodded. Let's turn around and head for home. I cannot wait for you all to meet each other and be a family at last. As these furry birds of a feather scampered homeward together, Agatha Louise learned that she had been egg-napped by a water rat who tried to swallow her whole. Luckily, the rat couldn't open his mouth wide enough, so he left her in the first nest he found. And the rest of this story we already know. Except for the last part, where Agatha Marie, Agatha Elizabeth, and Davy Crockett all welcomed home their long-lost platypus sister and loved her so much that she started loving herself too. Something is right here, she said proudly, and I believe that something is me. <laughs> So, in that fairy tale place where anything can happen, Agatha Louise and her duck billed, otter body, beaver tailed family lived happily and platypusfully ever after.